I watched Kanye West's interview with the BBC. Not because I'm into Kanye West, but somebody showed me um, a spoof, a parody of the interview on Jimmy Kimmel, and I just thought, well, I better watch the BBC one before I watch the Jimmy Kimmel one to see what it's all about. And I have to say, honestly, that the minute or so that I spent watching Jimmy Kimmel was the bigger waste of time than the, I guess, an hour of uh, Kanye West. He was entertaining, he said some inspirational things, and yes, he was bombastic and delusional, perhaps to the point of megalomania. However, I think the thing that Kimmel was picking up on and a lot of people picked up on was a statement that he says, rap is the new rock and roll, or is it hip hop is the new rock and roll, I'm the king of that, I'm the number one artist in the world. I'm the biggest thing in the world, something along those lines. And I don't really know whether that's true or not. I decided I'd have a look on the internet for a bit, find out what other people were saying, ended up reading an article on some site that I've never heard of called The Loop. And their point was that hip hop is about the seventh biggest selling category and that country and western is the number one selling category in America. Therefore, Kanye West can't be the number one in the world. You see, we've got two problems with that. Number one, just because hip-hop is the seventh uh, category and country is the top, doesn't mean that a hip-hop artist can't outsell any of the country artists. And the number two problem is the assumption that America is the world. And there's a great irony in that. Now, Americans try not to take this the wrong way, but the United States of America is the Kanye West of the world. They're the ones that think they're just indispensable to the world, that they're the greatest thing ever. Now, I admit, the rest of the world, we, we like to buy your stuff. Um, we'd love to go to parties with you. We don't object to any of that. Um, it's just, you know, if you go and breaking into people's houses and raiding their liquor cabinets and then expecting us to be grateful that you're pissing on our furniture, well, you're going to be a little disappointed. The thing is, American exceptionalism, and we've heard that just recently. Hang on. Sorry, slight interruption there. Anyway, where was I? American exceptionalism. That's the thing I was talking because Obama was talking about that. Uh, America is exceptional. What does that mean? It means that the regular rules don't apply. You see, what it means is, it's wrong. It's wrong to censor the internet, except if you're American. It's wrong to spy on your citizens, except if you're America. It's wrong to invade other people's countries, except if you're America. It's American exceptionalism. One rule for everyone else, a different rule for America. So they have that same sort of, uh, as, a, as an institution, as a, as a country, a philosophy that's very much the same as the Kanye West, I'm better than everyone else, I should be able to do what I want kind of idea. And it, it's been around like that for a long time. Exceptionalism goes back decades. And I remember, I don't know if you do, you might not be as old as me or you might be older. The 80s, around about 80, what, four or something like that, the famine in Ethiopia. Bob Geldof, who incidentally used to live in Vancouver, used to write for the Georgia Strait newspaper around here. Um, he put together that Band-Aid thing and a bunch of British musicians, they had their song and it was Do They Know It's Christmas and that was a fundraiser for the Ethiopian famine. In Canada, a bunch of Canadian magi magicians, yeah, magic it was, a bunch of Canadian musicians got together, called themselves Northern Lights and they did a song that was called Tears Are Not Enough. Now in the US, they did that lovely thing as well. Uh, Michael Jackson and Hall and & Oates and whoever, lots of great people. But uh, what was the name of their song? It was... Sorry, technical difficulties. Uh, camcorder ran out of battery power and, and for some reason I can't seem to find the charger. 
Hmm, anyway, so I'm using the phone camera at the moment. Now, what was the name of that song? It was called We Are The World. We Are The World, that's a very self-important sounding um, song title, isn't it? A um, little bit grandiose. But, you know, the world's only superpower. They're going to be a bit full of themselves, aren't they? Of course, when they're in diplomatic circles, they don't say we are the world, at least not until they have a couple of friends on side, which is usually just the UK and a couple of bribable tin-pop dictatorships. And then they'll say, why the world won't stand for such and such, and the world has decided this and that and the other thing. But I, I think my point is, you know, coming from that sort of superpower background with that sort of mentality and mindset, Kanye West is just a, a product of the society he comes from. He's just symptomatic of uh, the general attitude. I mean, the United States does own the world. That's true. They're not technically the world. Anyway, I have a charger to find.